Uh, hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to draw this reference photo. So this is a very familiar reference photo. I've been drawing it like for for a while, and it's really good for portrait studies. So I'm gonna be using a Loomis method as usual for the basic proportions, and then maybe some a thorough head to identify the planes of the face, and that's all. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So as usual, I want to start with the Loomis cranial, which is this circle here. And by the way, if you want to draw this circle really good, um, you have to change the way you hold your pencil if you are not holding it correctly. So if it's possible, find a board on top of which you can um, put your sketchbook and find a table so that you can have this type of angle and this is gonna be a helpful to uh, draw with your shoulder instead of your wrist and finger so it's, it's really it's really effective mm -hmm. in drawing good lines and curves but anyway let's go and chop off the side of the cranium So we have chop of the side of the cranium. In the previous videos, I've mentioned how wide the side of the cranium should be. And as I explained, I mentioned dividing the initial circle into two, right? Two equal parts. Then if you divide it, um, of course, we are talking about normal angles, like front view, when the head is not tilted and you divide the top and the bottom into three equal parts and this top line here is going to be where the side of the cranium is going to be chopped off so that's how you that's how you chop off the side of the cranium and find the exact proportion of that it doesn't have to be that way you know you don't have to to go through all of this you just exercise practice as much as possible and intuitively you will find a way to do that without um, without doing all of, all of the measurements so I highly recommend you draw and practice the circle and try to understand the, the structure underneath okay so now we have the side plane of the head and the front plane so now let's go and find and look for the tilt of the head and to do that I usually search for the tilt from the brow line the relationship between the brow line and the top of the ear so I look for that angle and the tilt and the brow line is usually above the line of the of the ear okay so now that we have found the brow line let's go ahead and draw a vertical line for for the jawline and make sure it's within the circle it's halfway through the side of the cranium and now uh, usually I draw a center line of the face but before that I just want to draw the contour of the face from the far side edge of the brow line I draw a straight line or some time a curve draw a straight line and I look for the bottom of the chin and I feel like the bottom of the chin is here but let me make it let me make it smaller because I don't want the face to look taller so let me bring it here so I just guess you know I guess and the more you draw the more you practice the more likely you guess correctly so at the first when you are a beginner it might be really difficult for you to guess the proportions correctly but as you go and learn as much as you can and practice it will feel natural to have those measurements correctly so now the the jawline and um, i feel like it has this type of angle so now we divide the face into three from the brow line 
Let's look for the bottom of the nose, which I feel is somewhere here. And the bottom of the chin. And usually they are equal thirds. So if you take those measurements, they are equal. And this line, the hairline is usually at the same level with the side of the cranium. So now that we have a general, we have a kind of robot um, in which we're gonna place the features and have the likeness of the uh, of the reference photo. Now we can go ahead and attach the neck. So here you can use a curve, but you can go ahead also and use line. Actually, let me adjust it. So the bottom of the the chin with the neck line and here the head the back of the head and we have some muscles around the neck and the shoulder So I think we can stop here and come back to our head and start adding the features. So before you start adding the features, you have to double check your measurements and make sure at least the, you know, the thirds and the width of the face is correct before you want to jump to the proportions of the features. So let's double check our measurements. Now let's go and place the ear. And in a normal pose, the ear sits at the same line with the with the nose with the nose line. So they usually sit at the same level. Usually. But this one is slightly above the nose line because the head is slightly tilted downward so the nose usually goes up but these are minor details that can really help a lot when it comes to proportions you train your eyes to observe the the dynamic of the pose so now let's come here and add the features and i feel like the you know the edges of the face the shape of the eye socket, the shape of the cheekbone area, all of these are part of the features. So because it, they depend on the head type, they depend on the people. So don't focus on you know, the shape of those minor shapes at the beginning. Just focus on the overall shape of the head. I'll come back to the hair later. So now we go and add the uh, eye socket. So you draw parallel lines and kind of look for the brow and um, the cheekbone area, which is really hard to find sometimes. Most of the time, it's really hard to find, but with a lot of practice, you're going to eventually find that. Use a lot of observation and comparison between each feature so it goes this way and we have another line coming this way and it goes downwards for the muscles of the mouth and then we have the shape of the chin So now let's come here and add the nose. So I want to start with the keystone shape, which is the glabella, and draw the bridge of the nose 
But before, I want to make sure that I draw the simplified 3D shape of the nose. So I'm going to draw a boxy shape in which I will place the nose. Well, let's make sure we draw the planes. So we have kind of boxy shape right here. And now we draw a straight line for the placement of the eyes. Still use your pencil to identify the tilt of the eyes because that is really important. And if you take uh, in a normal pose, the eye sits right in the middle of the face of the head from the cranium, the top of the cranium to the bottom of the chin. If you take that distance, usually it is halfway through. We are talking about normal poses and average proportion. So don't apply this rule into every head type because that is going to be over generalization. But if you use the average people, then you'll be able to identify the difference when it comes to non-average people. But usually we are all average and non-average at the same time. So we're not perfectly, you know, average. Anyway, so let's come here and look for the, the mouth, the proportion of the mouth. I start with the top lip. I look for the line of the mouth, the bottom lip, and the bottom plane. The tilt of the mouth is slightly different from the tilt of the eyes. So the eyes go this way and the mouth kind of tilted this way. So you see the difference? You have to check all of that before you draw. So the side plane of the cheek area. and some general shape of the hair I will use the, the nose to help me build the construction of the eyes so let's come here and make sure the width of your nose is correct because it's going to determine the width of your eyes if you want to establish the eyes from a nose perspective so i feel like this one eye here is going to be somewhere here yeah let's just do that let's draw one of the dots here and the other one here and this eye is going to be bigger than this one because of perspective and foreshortening because we are talking about three quarter poses and this is a perfect three quarter pose which means everything that is here is going to be smaller than here but not the difference not that much okay so here the cheekbone we have the cheekbone here let's come here and add the eyebrows and in this one here the eyebrows sit on top of the line of the eyebrows so let's just draw some random lines to represent the eyebrow So let's come here and add one line coming this way for the bridge of the nose and it's going downward like this to connect with the ball of the nose which is this cartilage here and we draw the bottom plane of the nose kind of like this 
and here we draw exactly the same thing for the bridge of the nose let me adjust this let me adjust it because the bottom of the nose is actually it's going really down like I'm coming let me adjust it so I have the bottom plane and then like this and also this one is following the same the same line this and we have And here for the filter, I'm gonna go ahead and I actually did not draw the center line of the face, but it's somewhere here, the center line of the face, somewhere here. So if you if you draw, sometimes if you draw the center line of the face off. And it's gonna lead you to making a lot of mistakes, but it's also important to draw the center line of the face because you can your your proportions are gonna be correct, you know, the features. So let's come here and add the filter, the shape of the top lip. The far side. The inner side of the mouth wrapping around the shape of the top lip and then connecting to to the right hand side and I feel like the edge of the mouth is gonna be here but still I I have to use the eyes to help me double check the measurement of the mouth. So all of this is not the end. I will have to correct later on. So I have the bottom of the mouth here and the chin. Well, let, me, let me just draw the bottom plane of the chin. And it feels like the, the you know the distance from the bottom of the mouth to the bottom of the chin is really smaller than on the reference photo but no problem we can fix that later so let's come here and draw the eyes just want to make it simple we draw one line second line for the top eyelid and the third line like this we have this kind of shape kind of a rectangular shape or I don't know and for the bottom eye we draw just two lines and look for this angle here and we add the upper eyelid and you draw the iris And you come here, you use this top eyelid and you draw the other top eyelid. Draw this shape and think about how the eye, how the eyelid is wrapping around the eyeball. I didn't draw the eyeball, but if you draw the eyeball, next time think about the 3D form and how it affects the eyelid. and the top the upper eyelid yeah so now we have we have something similar to the reference photo still there is a lot to change there will be a lot of things to adjust so don't be excited at this stage okay so for this um mouth I feel like I have to adjust it. Maybe because of the shape of the nose that makes the mouth look a little smaller.
as far as we get the general proportions correct the rest is gonna be minor problem now we're gonna erase some details that we don't need anymore and I would like to come here and add some planes so this is where we're gonna be using the Asaro method to help us understand the planes around the cheekbone area around the, the eye socket and the chin so here so I'm gonna use all of this from the top of my memory because I have I have tried to memorize the plane the measure planes of the Asaro head so let's come here and drop a straight line from the brow line and this gives us the side plane of that jaw area we have this jaw bone and here so I'm going to use the simplified version of the Asawa method so here I'm going to draw a curve or a line the mouth area and now we have top plane and we're going to connect that to the chin um, to the jaw area and here we have here we have um, the top plane of the cheek area side plane front plane and top plane of the mouth so we have you, you see that shape you see the 3d structure of the face so that is really important especially when you start adding uh, shading and if you want to make your drawing look more 3d so here we do the same thing around this and we come here and draw and also draw the planes so we have the plane of the bottom lip so let me adjust this because here we can see the bottom plane of the chin we can see a small portion of the bottom plane and also the top plane and the front plane I think this is more correct I don't know it doesn't have to be perfect so don't stress yourself too much on getting those planes perfectly anyway so now we have side plane front planes and bottom planes so we come here come here we draw the bottom plane of the of the eye socket so we have this measure plane here this big plane of the eye of the eye socket all of this can be grouped into one big plane but if you want to break it down into minor planes then we have side plane here another front plane and a side plane here so we have broken the planes of the eye socket in three, one, two, three, and this one is going to be the plane that connects to the to the um, bridge of the nose. And we have another plane here, and this is not really important. So just bear in mind one measure plane for the bottom of the eye socket and you can break it down into three and also plane of the cheekbone which is very important because it shows the the the, the change the transition between top plane and side plane of the face so when it comes to shading it's gonna be really easy for you to shade and and we come here and add the planes of the forehead so you draw two lines for the forehead and look how wide um, the forehead the initial forehead is and divide divide it into three planes or let's say two two planes the top plane or the front plane and the side planes because the head the forehead has this type of shape 
so it's closed this way okay so make sure you identify the plane of the forehead I don't know if that is a good representation but anyway try to understand that and we have also this plane right here which I usually don't draw because it's pretty confusing and really hard to get but I'm gonna try to draw that today so this one is for the the brow ridge and this is one of the hardest bone in the human head so now we have the proportions we have the structure now we can go ahead and add more details but before let's come down here I've already established the plane of the of the um, of the neck so we have the front plane we have the side plane and you draw a straight line here kind of like this also you draw the side plane of the neck and also here the plane of the muscle which I feel it's not really important to learn all of these planes but the main plane you want to learn is this plane right here for the bottom of the for the bottom of the chin and the bottom of the jaw so this plane is very important because it shows um, it shows the 3d of the jaw area so let me just adjust this we can also break down the planes of the ear or group them into only one measure plane so the first plane is this one, top plane of the ear, and of course using the Saro method. And you can simplify this all of these details into two or three major planes. And you come here, and you just draw this shape right here. You draw this shape right here, and you have the bottom plane. You have this bottom plane right here and maybe this one so we have i don't know if that makes sense i just with a lot of practice i managed to kind of find an indication of where those planes are so i might be wrong so come here again come here and just add i don't know another plane here for a zygomatic arch so i have noticed a slight mistake here um, for the eyes i need to adjust it and the mouth so if i i took that distance i took that measurement from the eyes in the reference photo the end of the mouth is somewhere here like somewhere here so I need to bring the iris slightly on the right side. We have to adjust that, but it's not a big mistake. Yeah, so here we go. I need to adjust the nose again.
Now let's go ahead and add the details around the hair. So let's go quickly. I'm trying to reveal the minor planes of the eyes like the bottom plane of the top lip and the top plane of the bottom lip um, the bottom eyelid, sorry and here the nostril just gonna do this shape and add some line weight around around the wing of the nose to show some form I have the bottom plane and we attach that to the filter I have the far side of the lip so I'm gonna draw the planes of the mouth to help me draw the structure of the mouth and make it look more 3D. And we have the side of that bottom lip, which is quite smaller. quite smaller than the top lip so we're gonna draw the planes of that mouth of that lip again to add structure on top of the bottom plane and that dark body the shoulder the bottom of the ear just gonna add some details around have this shape so we're gonna shade slightly the features this this the eyebrows the inner side of the the underside of the um, the eye socket 
those dark edges, dark corners, the bottom of the nose, the side of the nose, the mouth, completely the mouth, all of the mouth, the bottom of the mouth, and the bottom of the chin. So I'll start with the darkest values, or you can start with the with the mid tones, and as you get as you get comfortable, you go and add. Um, you build more dark values around those dark edges. Anyway, so let's come here with the hair. So the hair has a very dark volume, but I'm not gonna make it too dark. I'm just gonna make it. I'm gonna try to simplify while maintaining the 3D of the hair. So let's come here again. We're gonna add our style. At this stage, you don't have to copy exactly the reference photo because you already have the, the basic proportions established. So you can go ahead and just draw your own style. But you have to be confident enough because that is taking some risk. So if you don't want to ruin the drawing and you are not confident enough to you know, play with the reference photo. It's better you stick to the reference photo and just draw what you see instead of trying to invent something new. So, even the hair, the hair has bling, so it's very important that you try to figure out the planes of the hair and break down those planes to make it look more 3D. So you apply the same rules. You draw the general shapes of the hair. You identify the, the planes and you make the dark values dark and you shade the highlights brighter i don't know if that makes sense so taking into consideration the light source and our light source is from the left side so everything that is facing the light is going to be lighter and anything that is turning away from the light is going to be darker. You don't have to over shade your drawing, you just need to shade the most important elements like for example the core shadows. Let's go and add more line weight.
if you are using your pencil make sure to know exactly where you put your line weight you just don't draw without knowing what you're doing actually though sometimes it's it's beneficial for you to just draw without thinking draw what you see and not what you think you see And by the way, I'm not trying to make it look realistic, though it kind of looks like a realistic, but it's not my aim. So I limit myself to shading just the most important things. But there is nothing wrong with drawing realistic portraits. And it's even good because it helps you build a solid understanding of the um, of the shadows, light and values. I really don't want to go too dark. I want, I want to keep things light. Let me just add dark values around the hair.
okay guys thanks so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed watching the video and i really hope you've learned something um i upload weekly tutorials on my patreon so if you want to watch more one hour videos in real time check me out on patreon i upload weekly videos okay guys thanks so much for watching see you in the next video subscribe if you haven't yet and help me grow on youtube thanks so much see you in the next video bye